think traditionally when we talk about game-based learning, we're talking about games that are, that are designed for people to play to teach them something. Um, but more and more, we're seeing that the actual process of game design, uh, the, um, the hands-on experience of that can be just as productive. In the second two weeks, uh, each team of players received the chance to uh, create either a board game or a live action transmedia game. And the only major constraint was that the game had to be on some kind of serious topic. One of the things we did with the game design portion of the SEED program was bring in the Game Changer designers to lead a number of different workshops. And these workshops more or less fell along three different pathways through game design. One was around uh, aesthetics and narrative. Uh, one was more strictly concerned with game design and mechanics, so thinking about um, how a board game might be balanced or the sorts of challenges that you would face in a transmedia game. And the last was um, thinking through their serious topics uh, in more of a research capacity or thinking through the procedural rhetoric of, of games, how games and their mechanics can say something about the world just through the experience of rules. And so it was really in these workshops that were a combination of um, lecture and hands-on activities that the youth were able to really start engaging with the nitty-gritty of the game design and think through how to really convey a type of experience through a series of rules or challenges. In having players fulfill different roles in game design, that itself and assigning them different roles and having them work across teams before coming back to their own teams, I think that was demonstrating and setting up a model of collaborative working that is very relevant to how people work today. It's not just about everybody doing the same thing and that resulting in a particular project. You really need to draw from everybody's experiences, bring them together to produce something that's speaking to what everybody knows, what everyone's interested in, and what the group as a whole can feel proud of at the end of the day. One of the things that we really hit home, or we're trying to hit home in this curriculum, was to make a successful game you need to have an initial design, you need to prototype that design, you need to play test, and then you need to iterate. So our youth, in the course of two weeks, and this is absolutely amazing, were able to undergo this prototype, play test, and iteration series of, of challenges numerous times, but it was always really stressful for them to put their game in front, put, put their game and put this creative project that they were working on in front of other people for critique and then have to hear that criticism and figure out how to iterate on it. And this is something that a lot of people struggle with, um, especially us as game designers. In educational psychology, you hear talk of something called a desirable difficulty, something that it's, it's hard, but just hard enough that learning happens and that learning is challenging and interesting and the learner is motivated. And I think that our workshop model really captured this idea of a desirable difficulty in challenging players to do something that they thought was so easy. Well, at first we thought it was like, <coughs> my team thought it was really easy because we had our first play test in the second day of the game design and we thought that this was too easy and we the game actually worked during our first play test then we brought in other players to try and play and they liked it too it, but they gave us feedback they said it needs to be more job oriented so we had to go back to the uh, drawing board and redo a couple things the game document was i'd say hard for one person so we decided that everything should be split up equally because we all took part, so we all know how the game works best in our own ways. And we, it was, even though it was kind of hard, we had a lot of fun creating the game and the feedback that we get from the game and some of the things people learned, like this actually made it's worthwhile. I think that in the workshop, in asking our players to create games, they had opportunities to reflect on why things were difficult. And instead of having that just shut down the process, they were able to work with 
their workshop leaders, with their teammates, with their mentors, to really push past the difficulty and produce something at the end of the day that they were very proud of and that hopefully was a fun experience too. One of the things that I find really compelling about alternate reality games from an educational standpoint is that they're often very rough around the edges. Right? Alternate reality games are not polished products in the same way that video games are. And therefore, as players engage in alternate reality games, they start to think about how these experiences are constructed. So even at the moment where they're still players, they're starting to become designers. So a lot of the challenges from the actual gameplay, we wanted to prepare youth for when they would be designing their own games. Ultimately, when the youth entered their game design workshops, we were asking them to reflect on the types of challenges that they had had to perform just a few weeks previously as part of a narrative. But this time, we were asking them to deconstruct them and think about um, how they experienced them as players so that they could then design those sorts of experiences for other players. So when we had youth designing games around teen pregnancy, they were able to think about the sort of media that we showed them during Seed and then ask themselves, what are the media, what are the media assets that one might experience being a teen mom? What are the sort of experiences you would have to go through? What do those experiences make you feel like? And then how can we design a game around that? Um, our game is a transmedia game and it's called Knocked Up. And it's about teen pregnancy and how stressful it is to be a teen who's pregnant. Like you have to run around and do things that you shouldn't do until you're older, old enough to have a child. And I also think that it's like a really great lesson for other people to like experience like the stress of balancing your schoolwork and like the stress in all the situations of having a baby. So it's like a pretty decent like learning experience. I was game designer, so I designed like the car. Well, not in the, I didn't design the car. I wrote the um um what's supposed to happen like with the cars, like with the cars that they were passing out. Um, I too was a part of game design, and I also helped on the um, editing of the voicemail in the beginning of the game. And Shanae was the actress. Yeah, I was the actress. I was the voiceover. <laughs> I was part of art design, so I worked on the narrative, like um, what each card would mean, like insurance and all that, and um, like the logistics kind of. Um, I was the researcher, so I did uh, all the research for the like all the information they used also I helped around with what they were doing and I Dennis he will he, he's the one who drew this he drew this and uh, I gave him the idea to draw it yeah so I was basically giving them ideas and helping them around and stuff yeah. Yeah. I think it actually turned out good in the end and I think people would enjoy it if, it, if we just mm -hmm. polished it up sound it yeah. Such yeah. A risk everyone too. would really yeah. like it it was like a lot of improvising yeah. because um Dennis actually gave the wrong time to um, people. He gave them 15 <laughs> minutes instead of 45. Some people so like their baby, the timer. yeah, their, their baby, their baby mom just like went off when they wasn't supposed to. What? I am baby. having a baby. Five, <laughs> four, three. I'm having a baby. <laughs> but we improvised. Like we made it better. Some people had to have premature babies. That wasn't really in our script, but we had to go with it. In designing games, it was important for players to not only consider what they could bring to the table in game design, in considering themselves as potential game players, but they also were required to work collaboratively and consider other play styles, other motivations for gameplay. And together that created a more robust, a more interesting, a more real game experience that I know that for us as game designers, it was really impressive to see what they came up with, but I think that for the participants themselves, it was a really meaningful experience as well.